13 is where we will begin today. I know that the Lord has orchestrated already this service among us today. His plan was to be here, and He is here. His plan was to be worshipped in spirit and in truth by you. That has taken place, and it continues now to take place. As we worship Him even with humble hearts, ready to receive the word of truth and to deliver the word of truth. To, to not focus on all the other things that may be taking place in our lives, but to come into a place to receive the word of truth. Amen. What you need is truth. It's what you need. That's why I said the books don't have your answer today because they don't hold the truth. They point you to this way and that way and these steps and those few steps and all that junk. And that's what it is. It's junk. It might sound scriptural or right, it may even use scripture. But as we've come to know and believe and are sure of, if the scripture doesn't pertain to Jesus, our rock, then we'll be standing on something, calling it a rock, and when the storm comes, we're washed away wondering why. Because we're not standing on a rock. If your faith is in the cross and you're not trusting in anything else, you're standing on the rock. But most of the church, and when I say most, I mean 99.9% of the church today is not standing on the rock. How do I know? Because the Bible declares if you're on the rock when the storms and the winds come, you won't be washed away. And I, washed, I watch them every week, mostly every day, washed away by everything, every test, every trial, every temptation that comes. I wash them, I watch them, I wash them. I watch them be washed away, never finding victory, always having to go to bed at night. God, I'm sorry again. And we have the availability by God to say that at night. But it's not God's desire that you live in that, telling him you're sorry for being drunk again today. Sorry again today for being a gossiper. Sorry again today for having a lying tongue. Sorry again today for this and that. It's God's will and it's declared by him in his word that sin shall not have dominion over you. Doesn't mean in the hereafter life it'll have dominion over no one. It won't exist in, in you or around you. But here and now, God doesn't desire that sin have dominion over you, and he's made a way of escape, which is his son and what he did at Calvary. It's this rock that we have full assurance of. His name's Jesus. We sing him. We teach him. We preach him. We share him. We represent him. We are all about him. We're not all about the preacher or the church. We're all about him, literally. Preachers are saying what I just said all over America, and then they go the, a different direction. We are literally all about him. If you're sick of hearing about Jesus, you're not going to want to be around me. If you're sick of singing the songs we used to sing years ago that are about Jesus then you're just not going to want to hang out with us. We are few in strength, as Wayne Voss preached last week. But we have held on to the name of the Lord. His name's Jesus. Amen. That name, Jesus, means Yeshua. And he yeshua us, which it means Savior. He did that at Calvary, saved us. And I'm going to share some things in the Word of God with you today, and I'm praying that God would encourage you and edify you and strengthen you and cause that assurance that He's placed, that assurance in your heart to be even more so today. Because one, one thing I'm learning is that when you're walking in the light, you see more of what is right, and your ability to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is taking place by His Spirit and you also see everything that's wrong and not right. And you have enough knowledge and wisdom to let it alone. No matter how much you love them, you have to let them 
alone. I'm so glad you uh, sang the songs you did this morning. I thank the Lord for that. In Matthew 16, the familiar story will start in verse 13. I don't know how far we'll get today, but I have a few things I, I, I need to say today. I feel like the Lord would have me say to you today. And I do pray that you would understand that we don't just meet to say we went to church. We, we literally come together because God has a word for you. And, and I'm being reminded by the Lord even right now of something that I preached, I don't know when it was, a few months ago. Most of the people that come to church, they really don't come for a word from God to live by. And I'm talking about all over the, the, the world today. They'll go to church for whatever reason. But you need, to, you need to value what comes from the gift given you, the preacher or whatever he's called that's preaching from this book because it is a word from God to you for you, for now. And so a few months ago, the Lord had me to declare to you to quit making excuses for what he's called you to do. Because if you keep making excuses, there will come a day when you won't be able to do what he's called you to do. Your excuses will exclude you. And I use that is this morning. The Lord's reminded me of that this morning because you need to pay attention. You need to pay attention in a hungry way for what God has to say because he's going to speak to you personally today God is speaking today he's not quiet today don't believe anyone that says God is quiet he's not quiet he speaks we live by every word that comes out of his mouth faith comes by Hearing, you have to hear, not reading, but hearing. Faith doesn't come by reading, but it comes by hearing. You must hear God if you're going to walk in faith. So you need to understand when we meet, this is a sacred, set-apart time by God, not just a churchy thing on Sunday like everybody else. God's brought you back into the light. For you to think that you weren't ever out of it, you deceived yourself. For anybody, listen to me, anybody that's sitting out there today, listen to anybody preach out of this book called the Bible and point to anything other than Christ and Calvary and being able to relate it to that, then they're in darkness again. They've walked away from the light. Oh yeah, they're still saved, but they're deceived and deceiving others. So it is a very sacred time. That's why you need to pay attention of what could come along and hinder your very ability to pay attention to what's being said. It's important. Things that are going on in the world today, there, there are powers at work to, to take over this nation and to destroy it. At work right now. And we'll get to that, I pray, in a minute. Matthew 16, 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barhona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that you are Peter, and upon this rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But it's all the binding and the loosing. The keys are the keys of the kingdom, not of the church. The kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. Did you get that? 
not keys of the church. Catholicism, Catholic folks. Peter wasn't given the keys to the church, but the keys to the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is his righteousness, peace, and joy. That's what the Bible declares in Romans. It's not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Fix that air, would you? It's cold in here. If I'm up here, yeah, they said, yeah, if I'm up here preaching and I'm cold and... Amen. Don't make it hot, just fix it where it's not cold. A woman's good about that. Fixing things. Thank you. I want to point out this morning that this rock that Jesus said he'll build his church upon is the revelation of who he is. I don't care what anybody else says. When you sing about the rock and you, and you talk about the rock of your salvation and God is my rock and God is my refuge, it all points to Calvary. It all points to Calvary. You can't understand the Bible without Calvary. After Jesus is resurrected from the dead, he's walking with his disciples and he tells them the law of the prophets and the Psalms, they're concerning me. He says it in another place in John 5 and 39. You search the scriptures, for in them you say you have life, but they are they which testify of me. In another place, in John 37 and 37, at the last great day of the feast, Jesus cries out, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Amen. He says, if any man believes on me as the scriptures has said, Well, how did this, and then he goes on to say, out of his innermost being, rivers of living water shall flow. Well, what is he particularly pointing to at that moment? He's pointing to that rock. He's pointing to that rock that Moses struck and water poured out of it. He's pointing to what he would do on, cra- on the cross, him being stricken for our sins. The atonement for our sins, pierced for our sins, the piercing of that rock. That's what he's referring to if we'll believe on him as the scriptures has said. Not as these new things come along that we have to believe. We have to tie the written word to the living word so we can have rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. They don't flow from a feeling. They don't flow from some preacher. They flow from the rock and his name's Jesus. And the Lord Jesus himself said he would build his church upon that rock, which is the revelation of Jesus. And the revelation of Jesus only comes by means of the cross. Because only when he's lifted up does he draw all men to himself. Evangelist Ryan Keel this morning before service and I were talking. And he reminded me that even Nicodemus couldn't be born again, even though Jesus told him he had to be born again, until he was lifted up on the cross with the blood shed. For there is no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. You must be born again. And then when you are, on that revelation of who Jesus is because you received it if you were born again. He still only builds on that revelation. That's why Peter wrote for us to be able to grow in the knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the new thing is still the revelation of Jesus. That's the new thing. God doesn't have a number two new thing. He doesn't have a new thing in your church and yet another new thing in your church, preacher. He's only got one new thing. And God's new thing is making new things out of us. New creations. He's only got one new plan. He had an old plan, a law of condemnation. And we're not under that anymore. We're not under the law. We're under the new plan, grace. I said we're under the new plan. It's a better covenant with better promises. Hallelujah. 
God ain't building nothing that's not on this revelation of who His Son is. That means He's not building anything that doesn't have its faith exclusively in the cross. Because the cross reveals the rock of our salvation. Our King, our Lord, our Savior and Redeemer. Nothing else reveals Him. Oh, there can be seen there is a God by creation. But you can't know God without knowing his son and you can't know him without having believed in why he came all else is vanity it's will worship it's imagination oh it just felt good you know those people this lady in Detroit and I've told you this before but I'll tell you again she asked me did I know a good Bible and I was on a trip to Michigan I said, sure, I have one, I'll give you. And I gave her an expositor study Bible. The next day she brought it back. She said, here, I don't need that. You can give it to somebody else. And I I said, well, I thought you needed a Bible. She said, well, I'm just going to shop around. She didn't like that Bible. (laughs) But she liked to talk about her praise and worship. See, she liked to talk about her contemporary praise and worship. Because that was what she was really focused on. And she told me one night at the dinner table, she wished she could be bold like I was in my witness. And then, and then the next day when i talking to her and I asked her, what would you tell a man that came to you with an anger issue or some kind of drunken alcohol issue that couldn't stop and, and wanted to quit and couldn't, what would you tell him? How could he be delivered? And she said, I'd tell him just to will it. Will it. God gave you a will. Will it. And I thought, and I did more than think. I I have an issue of doing more than thinking. My words come out. Thank you. That's right. I'm not talking about the flesh like some people boasting. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell them what I think. You know, that's just how I am. Oh, you're a fleshly idiot. That doesn't know how to live for God and don't want to. But these people, I begin to tell her, so you're telling me the man who gets drunk doesn't want to be a drunk, cries himself to sleep every night, and eventually, if he doesn't get deliverance, will blow his head off because he can't get deliverance. So all he has to do is will it. She began to get angry because she began to realize that didn't work because just the night before she was telling me she wished she could be bold like me. Why can't she just will it? You see, will don't work. There's only one thing you can place your will in, and that's Christ. That'll make it work. I will serve the Lord, my God. I will believe in what he did for me at Calvary. I will believe that because God has uh, uh, enabled us to be able to believe that truth. The grace of God that saves has appeared to all men. The book of Titus tells us that. We started here today, and I had to start here because it's only upon this rock will Jesus build his church. He doesn't build it on praise and worship. He doesn't build it on any program you got going on if that program is not all about Jesus and what he did at Calvary. God's not in it. God's not building. The house that God builds is the revelation of Jesus Christ. God's not building anything. He's building the church. And the church that he's building, the authority of death and the grave cannot prevail against. That means when the storms come. That means when the lies come. That means like when you go to a nursing home and there's a lady laying in the bed and we ask, you, or ask her, are you born again? She says, I'm a Mormon. And instead of just saying, like most of the church would, oh, bless your heart, or at least you're something, I said, do you believe Jesus died on a cross to forgive you of all your sins? Yes, I do. Do you believe that's the only way? Yes, I do. And I said, then you're not a Mormon. 
And she finally, when it was over, began to tell us that how her mama and daddy really had her being a Mormon. Let me tell you something about your mama and daddy. If they died a Mormon, they don't want you to remain one. Because they're in the place where they know who Jesus is. But there's nothing but torment there. And they don't want you to die in that same place. There's no Mormons or Jehovah's Witness or Buddhist or Mohammed's people or Islamics or whoever, Catholicism folks who don't know the Lord. Anybody who's ever been anything but followers of Jesus who are in hell right now do not want their families to keep believing what they taught. They want them to now turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. He's the one who died for the sins that you see you're so manifestly eaten up with and you have no control over and you can't stop. But he died for it to stop. He didn't just die to forgive you. He died to deliver you from sin. And on that rock is the only thing that Jesus builds. He's not building based on your good deeds. He doesn't base... He doesn't build based on your works in the flesh. He only builds, listen carefully, he only builds on one work you're involved in. Some of y'all probably just need to make sure you get the CD or write this down. Jesus builds only on one work that you're involved in. And that is your believing on him. When they gathered around Jesus and said, what must we do to do the works of God? And the focus was on we. What must we do to do the works of God? Jesus said, just believe upon the one he God sent. That's your work. Do you see that? That's your work. And if you'll keep working that work, which is a work of faith, it's a labor of faith. It's a fight of faith. If you keep in that work, I just keep believing what he did. It's enough. He's building on that. He's building that. He won't build anything else. Only on that rock, the revelation of who the rock really is, Jesus, will he build. He won't build anything else. He won't build on anything else. You, you can't just say, well, Paul laid the foundation and now it, we can just build whatever. No, everything that we build, everything we are a part of in the kingdom today, all ministry must not just be because of the cross, but attached to it. Revealing it, for it is the power of God. It is what Jesus did to crush the devil's head, take the power of death away from him, Hebrews 2.14, to make an open show of the devil in all principalities and powers, triumphing over them in his cross, Colossians 2, making your peace by the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20. It's got to be uh, not only because of the cross, but about the cross. If God's going to be in it, and God's going to be building. He doesn't build based on praise and worship. He doesn't, build, he doesn't build based on anything you're doing other than believing in this rock that's an unmovable rock. And it's higher than we are. And we've been placed in it. Now I want to say something also that when you see the word the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, the gates there, that means authority. That means what the devil's plan is, the devil's will is. And he has a plan, he has a will. Second Timothy chapter 2, the end of that chapter, reveals that there is a will of the devil. He has a will for every person on the earth. But we've been stripped out of his will, stripped out of his kingdom, stripped out of his grip, and placed into Christ. That's why we're told to walk in Christ, because in Christ he's still powerless. It's the only place you can resist the devil is in Christ. Well, I'm in Christ. That doesn't, no, the only place you can, and only way you can resist the devil is if you're walking in the faith. Steadfastly resisting the devil in the faith. Not in a church meeting, not reading your Bible. In the faith. That means your faith is exclusively in what Christ did at Calvary. That means you're going to turn off TBN. Bloop. The bad news is what that stands for. 
If they're not preaching the cross, it's bad news, even if they're using the Bible to give you bad news. The devil is good at what he does. He's making movies today about uh, Greek mythology. How many of you realize all that Greek mythology is nothing but stories of demons and devils? But he's turned it into cute little wor- uh, Disney movies for us to just sit and say, oh, that's, so, that's so good and cute and so nice. And It's the devil in your house. Deceived. Don't even know what's right and what's wrong. Some people hear this and they're like, well, I ain't going all out there. You are blind. God loves you, but you're blind. Blind. That's why, that's why things are in your heart that's not working in the right direction. That's why if your spouse knew a couple of those things that were in your heart, it would scare them half to death. This thing ain't too comfortable, but I can get comfortable for a minute on it. We're going to get us a new one up here. About to throw this thing out. The authority of the devil will take your life over, it'll take your marriage over, it'll take your children over. If Jesus ain't building you, and he's not building you, as long as you're listening to Joyce Meyer and Ken Hagen and Copeland, or anybody that's using this book. Let me shock you this morning, I know it's going to be a shock. The Apostle Paul never wrote about Jesus and what he did in the streets of Jerusalem and Apostle Paul never wrote about all the stories of Jesus. Now, they're in the Bible for us to read and to see what he did for them, he'll do for you today. But we, listen, now, this is going to be a shock, but this is where we are today as a seeing church. I said a seeing church, not just a church. A seeing church. Whatever Jesus did for the people that we read about in that day, we know he'll do for us today. But if all I do is preach a hyped up emotional message about what Jesus did for somebody back in that day without preaching the cross, there is no way it can be applicable to you. The cross is the application of Jesus to your life. So before you start shouting and waving handkerchiefs, next time somebody shows up and preaches some story just about Jesus without preaching the cross, you better watch out. Because that could be nothing more than a big emotional bunch of hype. I'm telling you, church, the applicable part of Christ, all that he has to offer you, won't come by you reading something he did for a blind man. What he did for that blind man in that day wasn't for you. The cross is. That was for that blind man. And it was for you to read about and know he'll give you sight too. But your faith has to be in what gives you the sight. I was blind but now I see. And the devil's going to come to you after hearing things like this when you go home this afternoon and say, that's what the devil's going to say. It's what he always said. First thing he ever said, did God really say? Who do you think gave Paul to write what he wrote? Jesus. <laughs> Who do you think told Paul not to write about the things that he did when he was on the earth, but to write about what he did on the cross? Why is that? You've got you to be careful because you've got people, ministers, up real high, whatever that means. That means they're really low in God's sight in the church today who are beginning to turn away from the Paul's, Pauline epistles. That maybe we need to relook them. That's the devil. And here's what the devil always says. Did God really say? For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth now wait a minute preacher did God really say God really said that his word is right and that all his works are done in truth all his works are done in truth the two sons of Aaron 
in Leviticus chapter 10 that offered strange fire. Previous to that, the fire of God had came and burnt up the sacrifice they'd put on the altar and, and came out and was seen by the people. The glory of God appeared because it was done right. God will only move in what's right. But then immediately after that, because they were priests, they thought they could just do something however they wanted to. Let me tell you something, preacher. You can't do just whatever you want to. And you were in this region. You're still here. But you're not doing everything that you thought you were going to do because God has a remnant and a standard he's raised up in this region. You were leading people astray, and you still are, but not to the degree that you would have because the truth is here. They offered strange fire. You can read about it this evening in Leviticus 10, these two boys of Aaron. They offered strange fire. And the fire of God yesterday that came out and glorified God, revealed His glory, that same fire, that same truth, I said that same fire, that same truth came out and killed them. If you reject God's one way, he won't pity you and feel sorry for you so much that he'll change his one way for you. I don't care if you go out there and lay in a ditch. He will let you freeze to death and die if you reject his one way. But if you'll receive and believe his one way, he'll raise you up out of that ditch. He'll put you someplace where you can live and he'll feed you and he'll bless you. But it's his way. He's not like us today. Let some son lay in our house, not even work, eat up all our food, take all our money to where we can't even tithe. He won't do that. He'll let you lay out there and die. God said if you don't work, you don't eat, and he meant what he said. He has one way. It won't be altered. How many of you know the story of Uzzah? Uzziah, Uzzah, whatever his name was. He thought he was doing a good thing, and everybody else thought he was doing a good thing. An ark carrying the, a, a cart carrying the ark of the covenant hit a bump in the road. It's going to fall. He reaches out, don't want it to fall, but God already told him the truth. What was the truth? Don't touch that. These men will carry that with staves through the rings that they don't even touch it. And because he was doing a good thing, God struck him dead. You see, it ain't about the good you do. It's about the good Jesus did. Only him. He's the only one who's ever done anything good. Everything we receive on the, at the judgment seat of Christ, the, the rewards or the lack thereof are all going to be based on what we allowed him to do through us. Not what we did. You know, those who stand before him telling them what they did. We prophesied. We did many of this. We, we did. We cast. We, 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 we. What must we do to do the works of God? We, 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 we. No, Lord, what will you do today in me, through me? What will you do? To, that's why we began to pray on Monday nights well over a year now, almost a year and a half ago, because the Lord told me, seek me for what? I will do, not what I will have you do. If you'll seek me for what I'm doing, you'll be found in it, and I'll be doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's important. We've been given the keys of the kingdom. Whatever we bind will be bound. Whatever we loose will be loosed. I know time's running out. I'm glad y'all made 30-minute later plans today. Boy, it's getting hot in here now. Robin said, tough. Make your mind up. Well, I'm going through that. You know that. Not that. I'm going through that. Starting out cool, ended up warm. Better watch it. I'll come down there and touch you on the forehead. 
I got up off the couch the other night and went walking by her and touched her on the forehead and lightning. I shocked her. <laughs> she went, oh. I said, that was the anointing. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Daniel chapter 10. I, I can't quit until I, I at least share this portion of the scripture, how it ties in with what, what we bind and what we lose. That's not talking about everything we've been taught all our lives, that you bind this, I bind this, and I'm going to lose that. We're talking, remember, in the context, it's about the kingdom. It's talking about Jesus building his church upon that rock, and because he's building us, the church on that rock, he's given us the keys to the kingdom. The kingdom, that's God's righteousness, peace, and joy. That is the message of the cross. You don't have any keys from God without the message of the cross. He gave them to you, but you might have them put under a basket somewhere. You might have them stuck in your back pocket. But he's given his church his keys to the kingdom. And the kingdom is not meat or drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If I'm not mistaken, it's Romans 14, 17. That's a guess, but I think it's right. Are you with me? Daniel chapter 10. Look at this illustration, verse 12. Now, I'm not going to read this whole chapter. But this angel came to visit Daniel. Look at verse 12, Daniel 10. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand. Remember, stop right there. Remember what Jesus said. Remember what the New Testament says. See, this is rightly dividing the word of God. Luke 24 teaches us that he opened their understanding of the scriptures and said the Son of Man must suffer and die and be raised the third day. Did you get that? Noah, can you put that up there before we get there? I think it's Luke 24 and 44. When it's, I want everybody to see that with their own eyes right up on the screen. Since they're not in a hurry, we'll let all the Baptist folks get out of the way today. Luke 24 and 45. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the day of the third day. Do you see in your Bible today what opened their understanding to the scriptures now I wanted you I wanted you to see that you don't have any understanding of the scriptures that comes from God until you see it in the light of what Jesus did at the at the cross anything you thought you had before that before God was able to bring you back to the cross it was only you thinking you had something Anybody can read it, just like a man on Facebook yesterday sent me a message and said, the Bible says we just need to meditate on the Word of God day and night, and uh, we, if we do that, we'll find victory. And I sent back a text and said, I'm sorry, but I know people who meditate, quote the Word of God all day, every day, and they don't have any victory in their lives. They're living in religion and law. It's become a law to them to quote the Word. It's, see, see, that Word of Faith, whole denominational demonic move, is a law they've made up. It's a law. And we're not under law, and that's any law, except the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, who made me free from the law of sin and death. That was Romans 8, 2, I quoted you. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day, we're back in 10 and 12 in Daniel, Noah, for from the first day that you did set thine heart to understand. Have you set your heart to understand? Because if you have, some things are going to happen. And to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, Michael is the angel that God has assigned over Israel. If you're a Bible student, Michael is the angel that takes care of Israel, watches over Israel. Angels are ministering spirits. To the heirs of salvation. How many of you know the Bible says all Israel will be saved? Hallelujah. 
But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. What did the messenger come to do? To let him know what's going to happen in the last days. Daniel is one of the most powerful books in the Old Covenant, the most misunderstood books in the, in the Old Covenant concerning end-time prophecies. But I can promise you, you'll understand it better and more than you ever have when you see it in the light of who Jesus is and what he did for you at Calvary and what he's coming back to do. Verse 15, And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. Means he couldn't talk. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. And said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. Do you see that? What he saw in the vision made him dumb. It made him weak. I don't know if you understand this, or you better be paying attention to it, but the things that are about to come on this earth, if you really have a revelation from the Bible of what's been to come on this earth, it'll cause your heart to become fearful. For how, what it should do is put you in a place of prayer. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Now I'm reading this portion of scripture here to you because what Daniel did, what he believed and what his heart was set for in his prayer to God, I want to understand God while we're where we are and what's coming. It moved heaven. It moved heaven. It caused a, a war in the heavens to be even greater. Michael trying to get to Daniel, but held up by a fallen angel, the, the one who's the prince of Persia. And I know this is not preached or talked much about in the church, but there are authorities over certain regions. What kind of angels do you think watching over Iraq? in Afghanistan what kind of princes are there do you think over those regions and on the other hand why do you think that America is still able to gather on Sunday morning and preach the untainted Word of God like we're doing you see there is something going on outside of you in your life that you have something to do with I said, you have something to do with what's going on in a world that you can't even see. Daniel setting himself apart to understand God. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know what's coming. I, I want to know what you're going to do. Just like a year and a half ago when the Lord said, seek me on Monday nights just for one hour for what I will do. Verse 18, Daniel T. And then came there. Again, he came there again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. And said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. You see, no matter what God shows us, he's going to remind us, don't fear. Don't be fearful, because why? You're greatly beloved. God loves you today, saints. And the things that are about to come on this earth, possibly even before the rapture, that are going to be horrendous. Don't sit here and be so prideful as an American church person that thinks because horrible things happen to our nation that the rapture must be about to take place. What about the countries and the nations that watch their babies die? Even nations who are accepting Christianity and watching their babies die of hunger and AIDS. They're not hollering, well, the rapture must be coming. No, there could be some horrendous, horrible, ugly things that take place in this nation before the rapture takes place. That is not the wrath of God as, as, uh, as the, ra as the uh, great tribulation will be. You need to understand some terrible things are coming to this nation. And you may have to go through some of them. Through, I said. Some of them. O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto you. Be strong, yea, be strong. He said it twice. 
be strong, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. See what happens when you listen to the Lord. You'll be strengthened. You'll be strengthened if you'll listen to God. That's why we have to come to church and we have to listen to the message God is giving us. He is speaking to you today. And if you'll hear him, you'll be strengthened. Then he said, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. See, these angels are fighting. Do you see that? Still happening right now. That's why it's so important what we bind and loose. If we bind up the truth and put it away and won't preach him, Jesus, and what he did at Calvary, then the heaven will be bound. And the princes of the, the fallen angel princes will rule even more so. That's why we're called to take the gospel to the world. That's why we're called. To, God placed us here to declare this truth boldly so that the princes of the powers of the air over this region could be reminded, you're not running anything. You've been defeated. You've lost. This is God's territory. So I'm encouraging you to get on board and have the boldness. Don't just say, well, the preacher's bold enough. I ain't getting that bold. You better get that bold. You better join me. You better join me in this. Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee, verse 20, and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia will, shall come. He letting him know, when I leave, this prince of Grecia is coming. But I will show you that which is noted in the scripture of, help me here, truth. You got that up there, Noah, verse 21, yeah. But I will show you that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Did you see that? What God's going to show anybody is going to be the truth. And Jesus said he is the truth. Amen. But that, but I will show you that, that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Did you see? There's none. There's nobody else but Michael, the archangel, holding with this angel. That's, that's giving him these words of truth, the scripture of truth. And he begins to give him the revelation of what's going to take place in the last days. And I brought this out, this scripture, along with Matthew this morning. Because I wanted you to see that what you're participating in that has nothing to do with the truth and is contrary to the truth. When you're doing that, when we're doing that, we're binding the truth instead of loosing it. You've been called to loose the truth, and if you'll loose the truth, then something else will be bound. But if we bind the truth, then something else will be loosed. If you bind up the truth and refuse to teach your children, then something will be loosed in your house. But if you'll loose the truth in your house, the truth of the kingdom, Jesus is the king of the kingdom, minion. He has dominion. He is the king of the kingdom. And that by the way of the cross. And if we preach the scripture of truth in the light of the one who claimed to be the truth, we are loosing the truth in a home or on a workplace or in a marketplace or in a region that what the devil would have loosed for destruction will be bound. You need to help us loose the truth. Sitting at home watching Brother Swaggart every week saying I'm a part of a media church ain't going to get it. Won't get it. 
you got to tie yourself with some people where there is a church that this community can know when they drive by. Man, look at all the cars. What they're preaching in there must be doing something. And it's not like they don't know. The name of the church is on the sign. And it's the message that's in the pulpit. Crossway. Cro God's way. Crossway. Truth is on the sign. Crossway. The way is Jesus. And it's the cross. We need all the help we can get. We need your prayers. We need your finances. We need your time. We need you to join us in helping us be witnesses unto the Lord in this region of His light, of His love, of His mercy, of His grace. For there are many, just like that woman laying in a nursing home, who says, I'm a Mormon. How many of you have been ever told when you start witnessing to somebody, they say, yeah, I'm Catholic. Well, they're telling you they ain't nothing. They're telling you, I, I have a form, but I have no power. They're telling you, I don't want to hear what you got to say, and they think you'll stop when, when they uh, blurt out their religion. But see, when you tell me you're Catholic, that's a wide open door there. That's not a go on about your way, I'm fine, I'm Catholic. That's an open door. No, you in trouble, and I'm about to loose truth off up in here. And you go hear it. You might reject it, but you go hear it. In love, in love. You've got to begin to loose the truth, saints. It ain't about a church twice a week thing. It's about you loosing the truth. So that what the devil's been doing can be, be, be bound. Jesus made an open show of him. Triumphed over him on the cross. Not the resurrection, the cross. It's time for us to begin to use these keys we've been given. Keys of the kingdom. If we'll lose this truth in our region, there will be folks that become righteous in Christ. They'll begin to experience peace in Christ. They'll begin to experience joy, which is their strength in Christ. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I got about two minutes. I'm just letting you know. I know you're thinking, when's he going to quit? So I told you, about two minutes. You have to be bold enough to share with the people when they say stupid things like, I just asked God for it. I'm just believing God in this. Well, if they're Catholic, you might as well tell them God ain't hearing you. And I don't mean be ugly like that, but sometimes we have to be blunt. Until you're born again, God can't help you. And now the church won't even like that statement. We just need to love everybody. Well, I'm glad Jesus showed what that love was. Dying for me. We just need to love everybody like Jesus did. Now, let me tell you something. You don't get things from God just because you ask for them. James said that. You have not because you ask not. Okay, I'll ask. Then he turns right around and says, well, you still have not when you ask because you're asking to consume it on your flesh. If you're not asking in the faith, the Bible says, let no man think he can receive anything of the Lord. So am I, if I'm asking God for his peace, doesn't mean he's going to give it to me. But if I put my faith in what he did to give me peace, then the Holy Spirit will manifest peace in my life. He made our peace by the blood of his cross. I put my faith in what he did there. The Holy Spirit ministers peace to me. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. What is the joy? The joy of the Lord is my... Uh, the joy of the Lord is my... So I put my faith in what he did on the cross. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. When he endured the cross, the joy that is my strength became available to me, but only as I put my faith in his cross. The Holy Spirit ministers strength to me. I don't get it because I asked for it. This is how foolish we were for several years down the road in another place. God, I'm asking you for wisdom today and strength, and oh, I receive it in ah, Jesus' name. It's mine. 
and you ain't got nothing. You didn't get anything but a, a feel good about yourself for asking for it. You don't get from God because you ask. You get from God when you put your faith in what he did to give you everything. Or should I not ask God for anything? Yeah, you should. The Bible says ask, seek, and knock. But if you're not asking with your faith in the cross, you're just knocking on your own door. <sighs> I'm glad I'm through. Because y'all about to wear me out today. I just said that to make y'all feel better because I can preach all day. <laughs> keep your faith. Keep your faith. You can hear if you keep your faith. You can see if you keep your faith. You can walk if you keep your faith. The devil can't have his will completed in your life. If you keep the faith, the lost will be saved. If you keep the faith, if you keep the faith, not go to church every week. You will if you're in the faith, but you'll go to the right church who's preaching the faith. The faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Folks say, well, I need more than that. No, you don't know what you need if you're telling me that. When you see your need was met by Christ on Calvary's cross, then you'll be like me. You'll be singing a new song. Thanks be to God for the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world manifested Calvary and today imparted in my heart. Stand with me this morning. God is building. God has found a people that he can build. There is a people that he can build in the earth today. There is a people that is his church that the gates of hell will not prevail against. And it's those who have their faith in this rock, this revelation of who Jesus is and what he did at Calvary. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord, for these last days, remnant church. And I know, Lord, that you're raising up churches. You're raising up people. But we know who they are by the message. We know who they are by the message. Even though, Lord, they'll tell us we shouldn't judge, we listen to you. You told us to judge. You told us we'd know them by their fruits. Therefore, we must judge. You've told us to judge righteous judgment, which is a, a judgment's made by based on what you did at Calvary and what we're doing with that. Because there is the righteousness of God found without the law. Oh, without the law. We praise you this morning, Father. We praise you this morning, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We praise you this morning, God Almighty, for not only saving us from our sins, and when we got away from you, you brought us back into a place of being faithful to the house of God. But then we woke up and realized we were in a place of religion. And you brought us back now to a place of truth and grace. And Lord, we know it makes no difference where we are. Absolutely no difference. As long as we're where you planted us in a place that points to who you are and what you've accomplished. You said, Lord, in your word through the prophet Jeremiah that you would raise up pastors. And those pastors, those shepherds, what you fed your people through them would cause your people to experience the removal of lack, the removal of fear, the removal of dismay. And you have taught us today, Lord. You have taught us today that the only thing that removes fear, dismay, and lack is the shed blood of Jesus Christ and our faith in it. That perfect love removes, cast out all fear. Only what you did at Calvary do we boast in. Therefore, when we gather together, we are literally gathering together in your name. Not just a service, but your name. That you could be here to speak. That you could be here to help us hear. That you could be here to grow us and mature us to make the changes that need to be changed. For you are the builder. You are the builder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you today for your presence, Lord. We thank you for this revelation that you've given us that you're building upon. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Have your way today, Lord. Hallelujah. If the Lord has spoken to your heart this morning and there's some things he's dealing with you about, I want you to come to this altar this morning. I can't help you, but he can. I want you just listen. If you're willing just to say, I want to be a part of this last day's move of God. I want to be a part of this two-edged sword that's going out. I want you to join with us at this altar this morning. I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this ministry that's going to preach the gospel. I want to be a part of this. I won't be held back. I won't be held back. The devil won't tell me no. He might tell me, but I won't listen. He will open doors. Doors that are effectual doors that no man can shut. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll not reject being a part of this, what you're doing, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We worship you today, O oh God. We thank you today, O oh God. We bless your name today, oh God. We look at what you're doing. And we see more than just a people gathered on a Sunday morning for a get-together. We see a people called, chosen, elected for such a time as this. Hallelujah. 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 Called, chosen. Elected for this day, this hour, this time. Hallelujah. Open our eyes, O oh God. Let us see clearly. Oh, let us see clearly, Lord God, the path ahead. This path of righteousness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a harvest. Thank you for a harvest, O oh God. Thank you for a harvest, O oh God. Thank you for the gifts of your spirit. Thank you for the gifts of your spirit, O oh God. Your presence. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Oh, help us, Lord God. To only look unto you. Help us, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In these last days, I will pour out of my spirit, says the Lord, on all flesh. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams, your young men visions. Hallelujah. Even on your handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit. Oh, believe me, says the Lord, for what I will do. Believe me for what I will do. Oh, hallelujah. Save our families, Lord. Save our children. Save our spouses. Save our co-workers, Lord. Hallelujah. Save our community, God. Save our community. Put our voice, Lord, in a place where the region can't help but hear the truth. Put our voice, Lord, in places that can't be stopped. Let our voices deliver your voice, Lord. All over this region, all over this nation, Lord. Let our voices be heard. Give us a boldness to declare your word. Give us a boldness, Lord, that we would not be ashamed of what you're doing in us or desiring to do through us. Give us eyes to see, O oh God. Bless us, Lord God with a boldness to declare your word. Reach forth the hand of your son, Jesus, Father, and use us in these last days. Oh, Lord, thank you for bringing us from where you brought us, but even more so, thank you for bringing us to where we are and promising to take us to where you're preparing that place for us. Oh, use us, Lord. Help us not to be ashamed. We don't have to be deep theological theologians Lord but we can simply give the truth of who you are and what you've done we may be looked at as weak by many but that is meek thank you Lord for strength and wisdom thank you for a harvest that you will reap through your servants Lord hallelujah 
Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless Amy, Lord, God. We pray that you'd bless Amy, that you deliver her from the infirmity that has so easily beset her. Oh, God, we thank you for healing her body in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you for touching Angel's mama, Amy, that you would deliver her, oh God, on this day. We thank you that you're still the healer, that you bore in your bodies on the tree the infirmities of your people, Lord God. We thank you for wholeness. We thank you for a sound mind that thinks, hallelujah, according to the measure of faith that you've dealt us. We thank you that the enemy shall not prosper. Oh, but your word will prosper. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, liberty and freedom. In the name of Jesus, liberty and freedom. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, strength. Hallelujah. In quietness and confidence shall you find your strength in me, says the Lord. In quietness and confidence shall you find your strength in me, says the Lord. As you have returned to me and you are in my rest, you'll find my strength in confidence and quietness. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Blessed be the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Blessed be the Lord God of all mercy and grace. Blessed be the Lord God who saves and heals. Oh, hallelujah. I ask you to move into these homes today, O oh God, and bind the work of the enemy. Loose uh, the word of your truth, Lord. Loose, Lord God, the Holy Spirit in these homes, Lord God, that there would be a filling. Oh, there would be a filling of your spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Strength, strength. Fear not, says the Lord. Fear not, says the Lord. Oh, behold me. Behold the Lamb slain on your behalf, for I am your strength. Be strong. Be strong, says the Lord. Be strong, for I have placed you here in these last days for such a time as this. Such a time as this. Believe me for that which is lost, says the Lord. For I am still the Redeemer. Believe me for that which is lost, and I will find it. Believe me for that which is lost, and I will find it. Hallelujah. 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 That, oh, that which you consider hard is simply easy for me. That which you consider hard, for there is nothing hard for me, says the Lord. There is nothing hard for me. That which you seek me, I am well able to do. That which you cry out to me for has already been accomplished, has already been provided for. Trust me, says the Lord. Trust me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be strong. Be strong. In the power of my might, says the Lord. I will build you, for you are my church. Upon this rock that you claim to stand, that I have placed you in, I will build my people. And the gates, the authority of all of hell cannot stand against you, cannot stand against what I build. Let me build the house, says the Lord. Let your labor not be in vain. Let me build. I'm the builder. Paul is not the builder. Your preacher is not the builder. You are not the builder. I am the builder, says the Lord. Let me build my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust me, says the Lord. Trust me on this day. 
trust me. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your truth, your strength. We thank you, Lord, for the keys of the kingdom that you've given us not to cause us to walk around prideful, but to be humbled, to be ministers of your truth, simply ministers. And we thank you for these keys, and we pray, God, that you would teach us to use these keys more so as the day approaches, Lord. We ask it today, O God, that you would have your way in our lives, in our homes and on the jobs we have, and in the marketplace, that you would bless us, O Lord. Bless us, O Lord. And all that pertains to us, we pray, God, it would be only according to your word. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. He loves you and so do we.